All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And um, you'll, we'll, the one thing you'll like about this is we'll probably, since it's a small group, you, you feel free to ask questions along the way as we're going. Um, and we'll probably have you out definitely in time to get be the first in lunch line. My name is John Massey, and I am a program manager for the County of San Bernardino Superintendent of Schools. And uh, my role is more the data analytics and assessment piece, but I was able to be involved in this project that the county has been working on for a while. And we'll tell you a little bit more about it in a minute. Um, I'm also um, co-hosting with Crystal Ramirez. Crystal, do you want to say hi and introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I am a data technician here at HBCSS, and I support our little team here. Uh, we are little but mighty, and we do a lot of these uh, projects here at the county. So let's get in and talk about Cradle to Career really quick. I'm going to share the screen, and what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of talk about it, give you a little history, give you a tour of the site, and then um, allow you to kind of play, ask questions, and go from there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the website in the, in the chat so that you know you can basically be following along or playing along. So you can either watch while I kind of play, or if you have a two screens, you can do that as well. But we want to make sure you have this uh, website and hopefully you'll bookmark it. And I'll tell you a little bit of history of how it came to be. And hopefully it'll come in handy one day when you're looking for something or you have something you want to contribute. So let me go ahead and start sharing. And I'll give you a tour. So you should see a screen that looks like the Cradle to Career website. Is that what you guys are seeing? I'm going to reload it because we yeah we're seeing graphic. the screen. Great, the graphic kind of builds up. And the graphic is the, the kind of the starting point for all this. So um, before I started at the county, there was already uh, a, a push for the Cradle to Career, and even before I think maybe before the the state has the cradle to career data system that they're building right now. So even before there was that, there was this vision that the county had put together. And so the vision of the county, this graphic is the actual graphic that they came up with. There was, it was a collective impact work and they got a lot of different groups in the county involved. You know, and the theme was, you know, uh, how, what can we do for our county to have an impact, you know, all the way from cradle to career, essentially. And so they broke it down in a number of indicators and a number of milestones. And so if you're kind of looking at the graphic, you can see like there's a toddler and underneath there, it says, you know, strong development, mental foundation from birth to 36 months. So we know how key those zero to five years are. And then they have academic and social career indicators. Like, you know, what are some indicators at the different age levels? They also have some social and personal um, career readiness indicators, kind of milestones along the way. And so as you go across, you're going to see that, you know, there's some different year breakdowns. So you've got the preschool years, kinder, uh, grades one, two, three. You can see the kind of purplish magenta, like um, four through six. And you can see it kind of goes all the way through, all the way up to, to grade 20. I think we can't grade 20 in post-secondary. But across these areas, there's different measurements that we can kind of check and see how they're doing. So the group put this together and they've been using it for a number of years uh, as a model for the county. Uh, what they also added to this graphic that was really important were the pillars of support. So underneath you have the pillars of support holding all this up. And you can see there's parents and family, there's education, government, business and labor, and community and faith-based. So these are the key elements of the cradle to career graphic and roadmap. And then what the county wanted to do, they kind of envisioned, all right, well, we have this, what can we, how can we make this more accessible and more of a resource rather than just this handout? And the site's also available in Spanish as well. So I just wanted to make sure you were aware. So this handout is in Spanish. Um, you know, we don't have all the article, the resources translated yet. So we're still working on that, but just know that originally this document was in English and Spanish. And it kind of showed the milestones across the way, both socially and academically, that you can kind of check along the way. So that was the, how this started was you know, just creating this graphic. Then they wanted to uh, build a website around it. And we went through a couple uh, attempts at this uh, before I, I got involved in the project. And they had a couple of different, you know, they tried to do it in-house. They tried to do it with a vendor that was going to build this great system. And they, it just never came to fruition. So when I got here, it was like, hey, can we build this website? 
that looks like this and represents the essence of it. And I was like, you know, I was a principal, I'm not a programmer, but um, let's see what we can come up with. If we can get the right people involved, we can get the spirit of the Cradle to Career Roadmap and put it into a digital format. And you could see if you've ever done websites or, or made things, you know, you've got all these pillars, which are all different audiences. You've got a, a, a age range, it's pretty wide. You've got academic and social. And it's got a lot of elements and moving parts to it. And, you know, whenever you try to build something that's something for everybody, it ends up, you know, being not for anyone. But I think we were able to see, we found a, a web developer here in, uh, they work in Redlands and other places, but they're, they're based out of Redlands that really got into this and really got to understand uh, what this critical is about, how it could be a resource for parents, how it could be a resource for business and um, really helped us un create this. And so we're really excited that they were able to create a website that kind of does this. So the goal of the critical career website is to take these elements. So, okay, if I'm learning, if I say that, you know, students need to pass algebra, you know, by seventh or ninth grade, by eighth, ninth grade, they need to pass algebra. Algebra. Well, what are some resources that can help me with that if I have a student or if I'm a teacher or if I'm a business? And so that's where we kind of went in and started adding these resources. We had a firm called Hanover Research go in and basically find resources that match the different areas. And I'll show you those in a minute. But basically, so you get to inform and let you know what the what these milestones are, what the site is, why it's important but also give you some resources. So that's kind of the gist of what it looks like. So I'm gonna kind of start guiding you through so you can see how this site kind of hopefully accomplished that. So right up front, we have the, the, the graphic that kind of goes back to the original content and idea. And then we kind of have the, the where we can start filtering and helping you find where you wanna go. So if you're a family or an educator or business, you can click right on one of these and it'll take you right to it. And it, what it's doing is on the back end, there's a database that's kind of filtering these resources. So we click uh, parents and family. And so we have a little descriptor. Again, it's to educate as well as uh, provide resources. So the role of parents and family talks about why it's important, you know, how it goes through a child's life. And then we have some recommended resources. These are kind of obviously COVID and wellness is a to hot topic. So that's right up top. Countywide vision is really important. So that's there and then distance learning. So these are kind of the resources from the bottom. You can pull them up to the top so that they're easy to find. And then basically what it does is any resource we have that's tagged parents and family shows up here. And you're gonna see there's like a lot, a lot of resources and parents and family, obviously over 10 pages of them. So what we also built in was a way of filtering. So, okay, I got the resources that are good for parents and family, but I'm really looking for a certain age group. So you can actually go to this filter right here and you can apply ages and they'll pop up. Remember those, the, the different age spans on the original graphic? That's where these came from. So if I was looking for something for grades four through six, I can apply the filter. And now I'm looking at resources that have been tagged for parents and family and grades four through six. So if you scroll down, you're gonna see that we don't have 10 pages anymore, we're down to five pages. It's still a lot of resources. So we kind of thought, you know, if, if, let's make this easier for parents to kind of focus. So we have topics and we also have types of resources. So best practices are things that people are doing. It could be an article about a program that's doing well. Rapid resources could be, you know, 10 things you need to know to apply for college. You know, it could just be a quick, easy kind of thing. And then we also have some reports that are a little more detailed. So you could filter by type of resource, but then we also have a, a number of topics. So remember those academic and career pieces along the top of the above the grade levels? And then if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see the personal and social emotional areas that was the other part. These are kind of like the milestones. So if you're looking for something specific, you can go and see things that have been tagged for one of those. So I'm just gonna go and do math science, fourth and sixth grade, click filter. And now it's gonna give me, you notice the types of resources that it has are more math science oriented, they're more for that grade level. Um, and notice there's not paid multiple pages. Now we're down to just a few. So hopefully what we're hoping is that by putting some filters in here, you can kind of get right to the resources that you're interested in. There's Khan Academy, here's some math stuff, online games, some go from uh, California Department of Ed. So different types of things that you can do in these resources, the way they work is, let's do this one for example. When you mouse over it, it'll tell you what type it is. Remember the types up here? 
that's on each resource. You can see if it's a best practice or a resource or a report. And when you mouse over, it gives you a little quick little description. So you can see, is this really what I'm interested in? Or no, I'm not really interested in that. Let's look at this one. So you don't have to go into the resource to kind of get an idea what it's about. You can kind of mouse over and see, oh, this one is, is more what I'm looking for. So then if you click it, it'll take you to a page that gives you a little bit more description. Some of them just have brief descriptions. Some have more detailed, longer ones. And then if you click learn more, that's gonna actually take you out to the site. Most of the resources are, are external websites, but not all of them. Some are, are internal and different things. And so this takes you right to the site in another tab. So it's quick and easy for you to get back to where you started. You can kind of just get back to the original tab is there and there's your resource as well. So you can try out different resources that have some tabs left over to go back and visit them later. So that's kind of the gist of how the resources support the Cradle to Career Roadmap. We're gonna go back to the beginning and I'll show you a little couple more things that it has. So if you scroll down a little bit further, what we did was we kind of broke it down to the different elements. So again, remember we just did the pillars as this is kind of the pillars over here. So you can jump to things really quick. But remember how we did the filtered by age? Um, you can also do um, age here. So as you're scrolling down, it talks more about the success indicators and different age groups. And so if by clicking on them, it's gonna kind of show you the pattern. And this is that education part, kind of tell you about why does four through six matter? You know, what's important about kindergarten? And if you wanted to search by kindergarten, you would just click here. And again, talks about, you know, more information about why kindergarten matters. You can see the artworks more geared toward kindergarten. And the resources that you see now have all been filtered. Notice that they're already showing kindergarten here. So now you're seeing all the pillars and you're filtering for kindergarten. So if I was a teacher and I wanted to kind of narrow this down, I can come over here and narrow my pillar down to education and then filter. And I don't have as many resources. And now my resources are more education-based and more on a kindergarten kind of geared. And so that's another way you can kind of filter and get to resources as well. Let's go back to the main one again. So we've got our pillars you can search and filter by. We've got age groups you can filter and sort by. We added a little bit of data, uh, some little data facts, you know, and then we have a way to get to the reports. So if you wanted to just filter for reports, notice the checkbox for report is checked because that is filtering. So now you're gonna see these are all the different types of reports that we have available. It took you right to reports. You can see there's a lot of different reports that are a little bit longer. And again, you still have all your filters. So again, you can go in here and filter by age or topic or by pillar and you can knock that number down so it's not so many choices. And the last part as we scroll down or we have success stories built in. So success stories are a place where we can do a little more in depth. So as you saw, the resources were pretty um, brief and they were right to use it like an external site or something. Success stories are an area where we can actually go in and we can um, go more deeper, more information about something. And it's, it's contained within our site for the most part, but it does have links out. So we've been collecting a few success stories about like, here's our wellness conference, uh, so we have some expanded learning, student advisory. Here's our Footsteps to Brilliance program. So if you wanted to find out more about that, then you would just click over here to read more. Gives you more information. Here's a couple of videos about it. It has a website. So you can see it's a much more kind of in depth about this resource. And again, it gives you, here's another resource that might, you know, some more success stories to look at. So this is an area where we can get more in depth and more like a showcase or highlight some of the things that are going on in the Inland Empire and in our counties particularly. So that's success stories. And then down at the bottom, if you made it all the way this far down to the bottom of the website, now we're going kind of back to the pillars again. So by clicking on these different pillars, it just gives a little quote, a little bit of information, and we'll again filter and explore what's out there for like, here's business, talks about why business and labor are important. Here's some resources already pre-filtered for you. And you can see the resources are filtered here. And if you were looking for a rapid resource, you can go through here. So here's our mountain desert um, career pathways. And I believe they were sharing uh, earlier today, the um, map that they created that gave you a chance to see some, some resources and where they are, where CTU courses are offered. 
So again, it just tells a little bit more about it. And when you click on it, it actually takes you out to their site. And you can see it's loading um, their ArcGIS map that I believe Carlos, they, they featured this earlier, right? Yeah, I thought so. So again, here's if you wanted to kind of, so it goes by the um, industry. I don't want to zoom too far up. And then it shows what schools and what they're offering. And you can see it kind of clicks up. So this was an example. So we've incorporated their resource into the cradle to career. So it makes it easier for people to find as well. So let's go back to our cradle to career map. Oops, that's where we There's also here. another one, John. Um, Mike Goss um, and Shiraz in your office there, they, they have another one too that, that is uh, mapped out to uh, uh, that you may want to add to a link in here. Yeah, we definitely, if we don't have it, we want to get it and put it in here. So we can Crystal resources. knows about it. She's shaking her head. Crystal's figuring it. So is it already in Crystal or? All right, I want to just keep, keep with the tour here. And then we'll, like I said, if you have questions, feel free to, we have a, a link on here to contact us. So we're, we're hopefully um, encouraging, we do get these every so often where someone has comes to our site and they have a great resource that they want to share and they'll provide us the information on it. And we have folks that will vet that resource, make sure it's appropriate, uh, make sure it's not a, you know, uh, a cost involved or a login or, you know, they make it, you know, if it's a good resource, then we'll add it in as well. And then down below, again, you can um, check any of the pillars, the grades or the topics. And this is where you could flip it to Spanish. Now it's built to, if I have a Spanish browser and I visit the site, it'll automatically determine that and it'll kick the, the site over to Spanish automatically. And most of the, the descriptions and the content, the info have been translated, just the resources are not. So some of the resources, what we ended up doing was, we do have some of the resources that are in Spanish showing up in Spanish, but then if they, we also are including the English because they probably can convert the text, um, it'll, it'll, the web browser will translate for them. Now, when we get enough um, website, you know, websites that are translated automatically, I'm certain tracks where we have some that we actually are, then we will you know, probably flip that back over. But right now we only have maybe a couple dozen in Spanish. So, you know, it wouldn't be a good experience for them because they don't find very few resources. So let's see if it's converted here. They're gonna be before this. John, I had a question. So like, here's one that is a Spanish resource and it's translated for them right on automatically. Yes, go ahead. Is, is there any intersection right now with the statewide cradle to career or will there be once that's further built out? Just because like the, the name is the same. So I was initially a little bit confused as to what this was. Yeah, I know. And I'm sure that, that other people might be when that comes out. Um, you can Now you kind of understand where the cradle to career came from for this project. Mm -hmm. um, again, we have our own open data portal, which I could actually jump to right now and show you. Um, if they depends on how they have it and what they have with it. Originally, the goal of this was to put more. Um, if I can switch back to English, so I know where I'm going here. More data and reports and things like that. And so we we were like, well, it's hard to build a site that does everything. So we ended up with a data portal that was actually separate, but they kind of complement each other and they're connected. So in that open data portal, there are some resources that point back to the cradle to career. Read. And there are some things in the cradle to career, like you just saw, that point here. So the, some of these reports and things we have, it'll actually take you right to the report. So we're building our own open data portal right now where you can find information on assessments and uh, maps we've created, dashboard indicators, things like that. So when the state's cradle to career website comes out, depending on what how they display it and what access they provide, we could very well integrate some of those things into the critical career, linking back to the other critical career. If that doesn't sound confusing, sorry. So, and then this is just like, you, know, you can go in and view, you know, cast results were a thing. They hopefully, they will probably be again at some point. This is just a way. So if you're looking for information on how our county schools are doing, here's some information and we basically are using, this is ArcGIS. So those maps that we saw earlier do that, but they also have this hub concept. And the hub's pretty powerful and it allowed us to do a lot of stuff that we weren't able to do. So you get multiple years, multiple grades, and all these reports automatically update based on what you change. So if you just change a year, 
the data is going to change automatically. And they go into the separate subjects. Um, in fact, this is one our districts like because you can go in here and actually like, I want to pick, you know, three districts and see how there are four districts and see how they compare to the county. And it'll actually make this graph. So before they would always ask us, do we do, can you make one that's just for us and we can use it for a board presentation? So we created this tool so that people can create their own graphs and their own charts. And they can actually export this out and use it. So it's a pretty interactive, comprehensive kind of tool. So we've started already building this and I'm hoping that the creative career, that the state's building will be similar and then we can incorporate that as well and it'll be even more powerful. So, but great question. Yeah, when I heard that, it was like, hey, this is gonna be confusing. So back to our credit card website. So the other thing we can navigate. I, John, I have, I have a quick question for you. Sure. So, so you have, the group has decided, has the group decided, I know they have, but what, where are the indicators for what prepared for school means? Where, where, you, where would someone go in your website to see where you are with, with that? So you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, well, I think, let me see if I, if I do. So going back to the original graphic here, you know, you had different age groups and you had these areas below. Right. So probably the closest thing that might match would be this part. So if you're looking for grade 10 and 11, this was passing college and career readiness measures. Um, they used EAP as an example here. That was part of the original one. And then positive self-esteem motivation to succeed. So those milestones are kind of tied to this. And then if you click explore resources, the resources you would find would be connected to these uh, milestones. In fact, you can go in here and filter even more. So now you can go in here and filter under the academic uh, career, you can look at career technical ed, for example, and filter by that. And now it's filtered by the age group and it's filtered by the academic area and career technical education. And so here are resources that support that area. Is that what you were thinking? Right, but so like, the, you know, like the positive self-esteem and motivation to succeed, are you, is there, is there a tool that's used to measure that? that you're no, trying? yeah, okay, so anyway, there, there isn't one of those. So um, we'd have to go, let me hold down here and if we do, so we did make separate pages for these. So let's go to the social personal. So we talked about you know, what social personal readiness is. And then of course, it's gonna do the filtering by that, but it doesn't have, we don't have a measure. Now there could be reports in here, obviously, you know, here's a, an article about it. Uh, here's different you know, sources, resources, but we don't have any more detail on that. Just more of a description of kind of what it is overall. Um, so if you've got some ideas about ways to maybe strengthen this or make it more, um, Effective. We'd love to. We'd love to hear that. No, this 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 is great. I mean, you know, I'm just looking at the the it, you, what you want is you want you want folks across different organizations to be able to to buy into this, right? So if you actually specify a specific measure and they're not using that measure, then it becomes problematic. But having a, a general description prepared for school. You know, there are there are multiple tools that people use. First five uses something, you know, other other early childhood programs might use something else. That but they but they all have that indicator embedded in them. And so, yeah, that's one that's a little the you know, the academic part, you know, we could say reading by third grade and we could use reading scores. We could say passing algebra and we can look at, you know, there's some things that are a little more tangible and some of the others are not as tangible as far as being able to point to a specific measure or indicator that's readily available for everybody. I mean, we're like now in COVID world, wellness and, you know, engagement and how are kids doing and how do we know? And, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's an interest, but we don't have like, Oh, we gave them this, you know, inventory. And then we right. took that inventory and we looked for kids who rated low on that and we provided counseling support, you know, that might be happening, but it's, it's not, it hasn't made its way into this environment, but, you know, someone might write an article about that. And or a report about that, and then we would add it to you as a as a resource. Right. So that's the tour. You know, I really I think you you know the best part about this is you taking it for a test drive and you exploring it. And 
again, every one of us here has resources that we use and we share with others. And so if you see a resource that would be great or, you know, that this we should have in the Critical Crew website, feel free to, to, to go down to the contact button and just send us an email and let us know what the resource is. And if it's a great, you know, if it fits the cradle to career, we're more than happy to add it in. We see this as something that's going to be continuing to grow. We have our county people kind of, you know, every so often adding their resources as they come across new things to it. And the best part about it is it helps us keep track of things because, you know, we all have these great resources. It's on my Google Drive. It's on my I got a PowerPoint of this, or I did this presentation, or I got this great PDF that a handout that I use, and things are all over the place. And so if we can start putting them into this one location, it'll make it a lot easier for people to find and share on a broader audience. So that's all we have for you as far as the, the tour. You got the you got the 10 cent tour here. If you have any questions, we're more than happy to answer them. If again, it's really just play with this, feel free to share it with groups and and um, stakeholders that you meet with and it's it's still in its infancy we have about about 500 600 resources right now and we just see it growing and becoming more and more um, relevant as we get more feedback from people any comments or questions what i really like are the links to the resources i really i really like that um and um, have you, are, are you thinking about, you know, training parents on how to use this or? Well, next week at the parent, um, parent, we have a parent summit and I'll be, I'll be sharing this with parents as well there. So yeah, we definitely want to get parents to know that this is out there. Um, you know, because it, for, you know, like lots of reasons why, I mean, even the business, you know, if they find out, oh, there's reasons for government or business or things in the community this might connect them to other resources that they didn't know existed or that they might need. Right. Yeah, I look forward to spending some time to dive into the site and checking out the pieces. All right. Well, we appreciate you taking time to learn more about it. And again, we've had a great time putting it together and we love sharing it. Um, and hopefully we think it'll, it'll be something that'll help our area um, because again, it's hard finding information and just you know sorting through it can sometimes be hard. If you just go to Google, you get with so much, and then you have to figure out you know is it, is it relevant? Is it your region? Is it even up to date? Is it even accurate? So hopefully we can continue to grow this. Any other questions or comments? I know we're going to be wrapping it up pretty soon. We're here if you have questions or comments. But again, if you want to. Have lunch, that's okay too. I have a comment. I came late to this, but I just want to say I was on the earlier GIS one, and then Kim has shared this with us as well. And I commend count, uh, San Bernardino County Schools for the kinds of tools that you're developing. They're things that we have needed for a long time. And the fact that you share the way you do has been invaluable. Like, why do all of us have to do this? Um, in parallel to one another. So I just am very grateful for all of you and your excellence. <laughs> well, thank you. We appreciate it. And, and what, what we're hoping this can do is tap into what other people are doing. I didn't share it here, but GIA has some great tools that they've developed as well that we've actually linked to as well. So that we're trying to get different, you know, many different elements into one place. That's the hard part is you don't want people going 10 different places to get information if we don't have to. So thank you for sharing that. We really appreciate that feedback. Mm -hmm. are, John, are you are you tracking how people use your website? We are, we have Google Analytics turned onto this. And so it, uh, we keep track of where they go, what pages they're looking at, what resources, how long they stay, where they're coming from. Um, we've gotten people as far away as India and Australia and other places as well, not a lot, but a few have somehow stumbled across it. But again, most of the traffic is is our Southern California region, which is great because we are getting, you know, it's showing that it is kind of slowly getting out there. And, and one of the things that we did with this was more of a soft launch. We wanted to get it out and get it into people's hands and get some feedback and get make some adjustment and, you know, kind of see where they're at before doing a big, you know, ta-da. And then with COVID, you know, all the main events where you would, you know, roll things out all got canceled. And, you know, so we've just been kind of trying to do the best we can with getting it out. But I like introducing it in this way because 
I get your feedback, you know, get to see what you like about it. And it helps us kind of shape it, you know, going forward. Yeah, if you if you if you learn from that from that data about how people are using your site, I'd be really interested in hearing what you're learning. About yeah, it. we're starting to collect it now, and I think it will help us move forward with you know what types of resources they find interesting and visit often, and um, where they're coming from, right. and what devices. You know, like I said, this is mobile friendly. So if you shrink it, or if you go to your phone on this, see how it kind of. It's, I don't know if, I don't know what you're seeing, but it narrows it and makes it kind of long and linear. So it actually is total mobile friendly. We were able to make it do that because again, most many of our parents um, and most people under probably 30 tend to use their mobile devices more than uh, desktop devices. So we wanted to make it accessible that way too. Yes, great. Thank you so much. All right, well, thank you guys for, for attending. We really appreciate the support and feel free to share it at will. And if you find some great resources, like, hey, it doesn't have this, and I've got this great resource, we'd love to, we'd love to add it.